Okay, welcome to Iberia People Forum and Broadcast. This is a weekly event, and today we will be joined by um, a set of Iberia youth uh, to explore how uh, Iberia youths are surviving in a broken economy and then the challenges facing them. With me is the moderator, one of the moderators of Iberia People Forum, um, in the person of Engineer William Ukebu Odi. So he will help in asking the questions to all the youths in this uh, program. Okay. I'm going to start with Carlo, Kelechi Carlo. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready, sir. Okay, Hello, uh, Carlo, please Carlo. Uh, introduce yourself. Okay, I'm uh, Carlo Kelechi Carlo, a graduate of uh, an industrial chemistry from the University of Nigeria, Osaka. I presently reside in uh, Duma, Nasarawa State, where I engage in uh, various agricultural products uh, and uh, a little bit of uh, business too. Okay, you said you studied at the uh, University of um, Nigeria, Osaka, and you studied what? Pure and industrial chemistry. And uh, what, what degree did you get? Uh, yeah. yeah, what did you, what degree or certificate did you obtain after the, um, your education? Okay, Bachelor of Science. Bachelor of Science in Industrial Chemistry. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, which part of Iberia are you from? Okay, I'm from uh, Ndoda, Asia, Iberia. Okay, so... Now, currently, what are you currently doing to uh, survive? Um, I've, I'm engaged in a, lot, a whole lot of things. So I'm so, I sort of double into different activities so as to generate income. So presently, since I said earlier, I'm in Doma, and the staple business here in Doma is farming. I engage in farming. This is the harvest time of the Egusi. So we are harvesting the Egusi. I also own a shop where I sell cosmetics and the hair extensions. And also coupled with that, I carry out the home tutoring lessons for students. So all these are, and finally I send goods down to the east, uh, maybe to reduce costs for some people that need it on wholesale. So a goosey, yam, and a whole lot of foodstuffs. So these are the kind of things I do to generate money. Thank you. So, um, in what you are currently doing, uh, do you think um, what aspect of what you studied can you apply in what you are currently doing? Is there any aspect of it? What you studied, how is it helping you right now? What I studied had an application in a uh, two, that is uh, in teaching and uh, in that of the cosmetics. In teaching, in the sense that I'm um, imparting knowledge, I teach mostly chemistry, and uh, that uh, my my area of study helped me in being so grounded that I can teach effectively and uh, help my students. Then, in this area of uh, the cosmetics, most, a lot of people just go to the market, they buy their cosmetics, and they come to sell. But I myself, with my knowledge of chemistry, especially in organic chemistry, that talks about formulation of creams and the rest of them. I necessarily do not need to go and buy every product I see in the market. I can formulate some by myself, and uh, even the ones I need to buy, it makes me have an, make an informed decision on the kind of goods I need to buy and on how to talk to customers. Though I know all this, but to be frank, I'm not practicing it here because uh, the kind of environment I find myself in, Doma is really a village. so. Going or going all apps to do business, especially in the cosmetic line, is kind of a it doesn't really work out like that. So 
basically use my knowledge is in teaching. So if I have to buy something from you right now, what would that be? If you have to buy something right from me right now, it ranges from soaps, cream, just cosmetics, all that you need for your for taking care of your skin. The ladies, they have their lipstick, their eye um, shadows, and the whole lot of them. Also with uh, the hair extensions, with on and attachment. So all these things are things that I sell. Uh, that is, uh, if you need something now, these are the things, especially from the cosmetic line. But for the agricultural line, any of the agricultural products that, that comes from the north, I send them to the east. Person, uh, let me go to um, Ikechuku. Okay, Ikechuku, uh, can you tell us who you are? Introduce yourself. Okay. Can you hear me now, please? Yes, go ahead, introduce yourself. Okay, yes, as I was saying, my name is um, Mr. Carl Ikechuku, and uh, I'm a first degree graduate of um, geoinformatics and land surveying from the University of Uyo. I graduated as the best student in the Department of Geoinformatics and Surveying in 2018 from my uh, school. So I am currently based in Uyo uh, because I just concluded my uh, mandatory National Youth Service Corps program. That is where I'm involved in research and also a little business to sustain myself. So uh, if we, uh, what, what kind of business is that? Mm, the business is actually more uh, about fashion designing and also um, the selling of um, beans flour. But uh, what I do with majority of my time is uh, I, I engage in hydro geodesy research where, where I utilize the functions of a math lab matrix laboratory to do analysis. So I am also involved in tutoring masters uh, and PhD candidates who find uh, problems in using the MATLAB for their analysis. So I teach them and uh, for example, one of them in our department now who is trying to work on a satellite uh, uh, data called GRACE. GRACE is a, a, a satellite is a satellite launch for uh, measuring gravity ar around the Earth, which is used in monitoring uh, variations of uh, groundwater changes in, around the whole world. So we use MATLAB. I use MATLAB to do that kind of analysis so that I can make predictions of um, drought and uh, flooding. And uh, you, you, I also apply uh, uh, complex mathematical methods such as the uh, Kama Feta and the uh, other mathematical functions in order to reduce noise from this satellite data. Okay. Um, I was told that you were somehow involved in uh, one program called um, Solve Me. What about that program? What, what is Solve Me and what did you do in Solve Me? Okay. Solve Me was um, a program launched uh, in order to help students who are weak in calculations, uh, not just mathematics, but also physics, chemistry, and every other calculation course. It's just a group of young men and women that came together to be able to actualize this dream. So what we do at Solve Me is that um, we engage in home-to-home -home tutoring of students, uh, we tutor students on these courses, mathematics and other relevant calculation courses, and also we host mathematics competitions. Uh, so far, we've been able to host two mathematics competitions. The first one was in 2018, uh, around December, and the second one was in 2019. So due to the coronavirus and lockdown, we've not been able to host any competition this year. But it's also important to note that these competitions were all held in Uyo, Akwaibo State, and uh, we, we saw serious progress I mean, from the, the second one we did, we saw serious progress uh, compared to the first one we did. So it's just an avenue of um, enlightening and engaging students to be able to uh, uh, pick their interest in the area of calculations and mathematics. 
Okay, so if there's an opportunity, uh, are you considering expanding the Solve Me program to other places like Havia or Enugu, Anambra? Is that something you would like to consider? Yes, sir. that uh, was a part of the uh, drawing plan. We plan that um, in due time, after we must have um, held series of competitions to be able to build our foundations here in Uyo, Akwaibo State, we will now spread our wings to first other local governments in Akwaibo State. And after we must have covered a lot of ground in Akwaibo State, we now move to the neighboring state, Dabia State, uh, to also um, continue with the program. So we had that in mind. We have that in mind also. Okay, so why is it that why is it that some of these things cannot be done at the same time? Just like when when uh, a, a, an exam such as NECO or WAIEC is being taken, it is taken across the board on the same day or within the same week. So why is it that the competition cannot be held at the same time in all the local governments or even across the state? Maybe you're holding one at Aba and one at Uyo and one at Umuaya, things like that, on the same day or within the same video since it is something like a competition okay um from the little experience i could gather from this uh, competition series of competitions i've been hosting uh, uh i discovered that uh, it was a very capital intensive project even when you reduce it to the barest minimum because when you want to host competitions you have to include the prizes which has to be something worthwhile to be able to um, uh, 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 allow schools to come they may be so that they will have something they are fighting for. So it has to be something worthwhile. You have to consider that. You have to consider a lot of uh, the accommodation, the uh, security, the welfare of all the students and parents that will be there. So uh, the, long, the, the, the thing is just that the uh, money involved in hosting this competition in several locations at the same time is something that I couldn't really afford because the only um, sponsorship that Solve Me got was from Link Moment. And uh, that was even why we were able to host the second competition. So because of uh, poor funds, which was not due to lack of, uh, maybe not trying, because we tried to apply to several organizations, to banks, to a lot of um, uh, institutions to get uh, funding for the program, but um, most of them, we are not interested. I don't know, maybe because it's something academic related. So if we are able to get funding, it will be something we, it's something we want to do. So it's something we can easily execute. So I say the major reason why we were not able to host that was just funding. Okay, so now if somebody, uh, some students are taking WAIEC now or NECO, who do they, do they have any external security? Um, if students are taking WAIEC, uh, of course, uh, the, the, the venue where they are taking the exam, uh, they, they have to provide security for those students because if anything should happen to them, the management of the school will be held responsible. So it's something we have to, and you know, Solve Me is not like a mandatory exam like WAIEC or NECO. So regardless, we have to provide security for the parents and the teachers that will, will be coming there. So we have to uh, make adequate preparation that uh, no problem will be in the venue. Immediately after the competition, they just leave and then we know we have our hands off it. So if it is in terms of security, I believe, uh, solve me, we have to provide security whenever we are hosting something that we want people to come around. Especially these are little children that came with their parents. Some of them came alone. So it's very important to provide security for them. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are switching to uh, Iboko. Iboko. Iboko, we are switching to you. Yes, uh, after I'm Iboko. Iboko, no, Ibere. Even just school, I'll be a state polytechnics. Mungo management. And the name to our town, Dr. Yaku. I'm a professional MC. Can I go on? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm to ya, do to ya, uku. Uh, I'm not managing my business. I'm a poor, uh, Lines Nigerian Limited. Uh, I'm not all types of drinks. Or them my other. Do ya know each other? I'm not that. I'm not that. 
I'm an event planner. Management, Elegia has Yahya. Na, a man has me, me, Odiabola, a lobola, Odiadro, Mboka, a non MC. I am the Jerry MC Mbo MC Iboko. Ndewo <laughs> 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 Yes. Mara bia office you talk ma mo bora shop o be zu he talk ma. Nda he nyo ngo na azu sa. Any and the very Affordable price or both price in a docasia, although my prices are you know uh, pocket friendly. A bone carbon, you also hire three bottles, a young ham race, your corner, and the middle thing about you, you know, most are the original, original drinks. A boy, my lana babo, a very head of adulteration, you know, blah, 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 no, my boss, come on, I make sure I'm with a direct from the source. Nano Yana, the original people who own the product and the brands. I even say Musa and I'm a Musa from the adulterated persons or dealers. Okay, Mara Chopani, and then my Bundi won't know by my wedding in Marbungene. In Wiki Butuano, he in an in an hour, or him we keep by one more while we are not here. And come, Bobo, I don't know what Mama, I know the size of the program because uh, the size of the program is always determining the price. Oh, no, Nana, because uh, I don't know when you get together. KBM stand the talk show. Price is the problem plan. You know, what a who price is an idea. So, oh, no, yeah. Yakparum got your camp involved. Mama Quaro, your lady, Allah. Adam, there was. Now let's go to uh, Day Day UK. Day Day UK, uh, tell us who you are. Introduce yourself. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Adam, uh, introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Carl Emmanuel Ukebu. Um, I'm known as Day the UK around all platforms. Um, I mean, YouTube, Instagram, where I post my videos. I am a second year law student in the University of Nigeria, Enugu campus. And comedy is what I do as part time. And also, by God's grace, I'm, I've been getting some things from it. Okay, so you're currently studying law. Yes. And um, is there. Is there any aspect of um, right now you are still a student? So is there any aspect of law that has to do with comedy? Law and comedy. Uh, anyway, La Cici has covered some parts of uh, what we do, but the the aspect of law that has to do with like there is no much aspect of law that has to do with comedy because there are like two different things. One thing with law is it's it's a very respectable cause and. Whenever I, I'm doing anything I want to do, I make sure I don't, do I say, offend the profession. I don't know if you know me. Law is something that uh, the, we take pride in, in the law itself, and we take pride in what we do. So whatever you do, when it comes to law, 
I try not to go towards that direction. So the, sim the similarity between law and comedy is, is not much. In fact, when I tell people I study law and, I, and I'm also a comedian, they find it difficult. They find it difficult to believe. It. You know that once you're a lawyer, you know you're supposed to wear suits, be serious, and all this. But I'm like the opposite of that. So law and comedy, they have uh, uh, less in, in common. Okay, so which means you are telling us that anytime uh, you you wear two hats, one as a as a potential lawyer and then exactly. one as a comedian. Now, exactly. now let's go. First of all, let's go into uh, uh, the comedy. Then we'll come back to the law. So when okay. did you start comedy? Uh, what what motivated you to start um, uh, doing some comedy? Okay, um, I I started making comedy videos. Uh, in 2017, yes, that was when I posted my first video. And I was still in Insuka when I was seeking admission. I was, because I was at Insuka trying to read and get my admission. But, you know, I, as someone that doesn't like just sitting and, and just being bored, I, I decided to start comedy. And um, I would say till date, it's like one of the best things I've done for myself. Because personally, it makes me happy, you know, uh, I'm someone that when I see something, the first thing that comes to mind is how how can we recreate this? How do we make this to be funny? Or uh, uh, you know how how do we make this into a video? So when those ideas come to me, I can't just stay you know just stay like that. So I I I, I tap into the creativity and try to do something that will either be funny or to inspire other people or to educate other people. So now, do you do you, rec do you record your own video or does somebody record it for you? Yes, I, uh, I do everything myself. Although the more you go up, the more you go up, you you now have to go to some productions, like not not official production. Like for example, the last video I made is not yet out. It's not yet out, but the video I made, I I went to St. Michael's and it was it was a video that involved other people now there is no way i will record it myself and still you know do it and still be in the video so we had to i had to hand it over to someone else to be the dop of the video that's the direction of production so uh, and when i'm acting the guy is behind the camera doing what he needs to do you know controlling the camera but the videos where i'm inside the house or or uh, the camera is just in one particular angle. Most times I'm alone. I have my camera, I have my tripod. Once I keep it, I do what I want to do. Then I change the camera position. I do. I also do what I want to do. Then I go back to edit it and make it look like it happened in one shot or that. Okay, so how do you, who edits the video? Do you edit the video yourself or somebody else? I do, I do everything myself. I. Uh, before I use my system, there's this app we call Filmora. I use it, but now I found an easier way to, you know, edit with my phone. It, it's also editing is stressful. It's like one of the most stressful part of the video because after acting, you have to sit down, analyze it. Maybe if you miss a shot, you now think of what to do to join the whole thing together to make it make sense or to make it, you know, understandable to the people watching it. Or if the if the point of that particular video is to be funny, you have to still find a way to make that video to be funny. So editing is like one of the most difficult part of the video because after acting, you now have to sit down. The calm you needs to know what what uh, uh, the message in the video. You need to find a way to pass it across. Okay. So um, have you started getting um, any? Any referral or invitation to uh, do uh, some kind of uh, stand-up comedy or studio performance or stuff like that? Okay, um, I've been I've been doing stand-up in school. The only reason why uh, I I don't I don't recommend or I don't normally collect the deals I get is because of school. Uh, law is law is very difficult, and the number of the number of occasions I get to be in. I actually can't accept them all because by God's grace in my school, I'm like very known and very popular. So people want me to be their MC or be part of their event. But since I'm still in school and it, it, it just can't, I, I, I just can't be at every night gathering. I don't know if you get, because some of these programs are at night. Now as in one school, every night gathering, you will see me as if I'm, the one hosting it every time. So sometimes I just uh, uh, remove myself from some of, it, some of it. But the ones hosted in my department or faculty or maybe my very good friends that I can't say no to, 
I, I have been doing it for them and it has been profitable to me. Okay, so where do you say you post your videos? Okay, I, I post my videos on YouTube. I post my videos on TikTok. I post my videos on Instagram and uh, Facebook. Although Facebook is like where, where I don't normally come to. But the main places I post my video is TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. So have you thought about, or are you already um, uh, trying to cash in on, on, in, on any of these platforms? I, I, I was told that some of them pay a little money, if not much. Yes, yes. YouTube, YouTube is the platform that pays you directly for your video. The other platforms, they don't pay, but when you get a particular number of followers, you can now get excuse me, you can now get people that, you know, want to, to advertise a product or, you know, use your influence as an influencer. So you will now charge them to do that. But YouTube, yes, I've gotten money from YouTube. And also on Instagram, I don't know, uh, this previously co concluded Don't Leave Me Challenge. I, I won 100,000 Naira from the challenge. Yes, so I've, I've been able to cash out from both YouTube and Instagram. Okay, let's see if we can uh, play some of your clips and then uh, you tell us a little bit about it. Let me share it okay. and then you tell us which one to play. Okay. So this is your channel. So let's see. Um, you can play the funny "Don't Leave Me" challenge, or you can play the first one there. The first one. one. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. This one is not a comedy, but it's it, it passes a message. Okay. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about this video? Okay. Yes. That video, um, uh, what actually inspired it uh, are two things. First, what, what happened to me when I was in Enugu, I was with a friend and we were inside the KK and someone lost her bag. Like the bag was there because the driver didn't know. So when we went around contacting the person, because there was a small phone inside, you know, this Nokia touch. So there's no need to unlock, right? We, we saw my son there. We called the person and we now heard that the bag belonged to a woman, like a normal hustler, you know, the, that the boy told us, the son told us that the woman has been crying, looking for her money. So we told her where to pick it up. Now I, I combined the idea with the fact that, you know, people, uh, uh, Nigerians now, they glorify, will I say online fraudsters, you know, this Yahoo. They glorify it is like ah the government is eating our money so this is our only way to take it back 
right? And they feel an entitlement to, to something that someone mistakenly misplaces. I don't know if you're getting me. So with this kind of thing, if you are someone that you see something inside, you see something that someone misplaces and uh, uh, you take it as your own. But when you look at the left, you condemn the politicians or you condemn the Yahoo boys or you condemn this one, you are just recycling the same system in your own way. So that is the personal message I wanted to pass with the video. Okay, um, let's share one more video and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Boom. Big shot. You can, you can which one? Down, go down, go down. No, not that one. Which one? Boom. Go down. Oh, that's me. Why did you say the gun leave me gone wrong? There's a video titled Don't Leave Me Gone Wrong. Go to video. Click on videos. Click on videos. No, that is that is me trying to help someone. That is actually why I'm in the village now. Go to videos. Okay, now scroll. Look at the the funny don't leave me challenge gone wrong. The one with 1.6 thousand views. Exactly that one. So, um, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. So this is like, this was a trend. It's called Don't Leave Me Challenge. I think every every young person watching this should have heard the, the um, this? meme. Don't leave me, don't leave me. So the general idea of the meme is to make puns, right? Uh, when you, you can say, okay, right now I'm sitting on a chair, right? I can say, ah, I'm sitting on a chair. Does that make me a chair, man? So people will not be shouting, don't leave me, don't leave me. It's, 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 so it's just basically to make puns. But uh, I thought, uh, why not change it up a little bit to mean something else? So that was where the idea came up to actually do something. That was my sister. But to actually do something that sounded as if someone was breaking up with the, the boyfriend, but used the challenge. So this particular video, it went so viral. Like, in fact, recently someone sent me a screenshot of it in India like the one of their biggest pages hello yes go ahead go ahead go ahead, go ahead. Biggest pages posted it on facebook uh it went viral on on, on, on uh, instagram people like tunde had not just too funny and um, uh, uh, bella niger laugh niger insta blog niger they reposted it like people found it very hilarious and uh, i thank god for it so that's just basically what the video is about okay Thank you. We'll get back to you. Uh, William, are you ready now? Yeah, very ready. Okay. Very um, who else is on board? Uh, Messi, please uh, introduce yourself. Tell us where you school or what you are currently doing. You may also okay. go ahead. My and name is Messi. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. okay my name is Mercy Nduka. Okay. Yes, I school in um, Gateway in Ogun State. I study insurance. Okay. What I do is to bake. I bake cakes, different kind of cakes. 
Okay, your baking business, is it uh, on a large scale or small scale where you deliver to students who want, or you have a standard business name where people from different no. uh, work of life or from another state outside your location order? It's just a small scale because it's still growing. Okay, so you sell to uh, uh, your neighbors or around the market or uh, where do you sell mostly? Miss, I, yeah, go ahead. Bake on delivery. I bake on delivery. When you want, I bake it. I don't bake down most times. Okay, so is this something you may consider to do? Uh, you bake? Uh, some things and then you sell it to people immediately without them placing an order. Just like uh, a, um, a, a woman that sells akara, she comes every morning, she prepares her akara and then people will just come and buy it. And if you want more orders, she will do for you. Is that something you are considering? Um, in the process, I would like to do that but right now it's not possible so what are the challenges what made it impossible what are the challenges you're facing what made it impossible is it time or resources okay are there other things that you bake yeah you are cutting yeah. baking bread and cake yes yeah, snacks Okay, so those puff, snacks, puff, um, egg roll. Yes, yeah, those ones, those ones you can bake them, those ones and then sell them. It's true or false. True, I can bake and then go and sell. Okay. So now, what are the major challenges that uh, the, uh, the small scale business is facing now? What are the major challenges? Okay, um, money to buy most of the equipment like a mixer, oven, and all that. It's just resources. Okay, resources is the hindrance now. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, we, we, we hear you. Okay, let's get back to um, Macy's having connection problem. Let's get back to uh, Ibu. Okay, Iboko. In my empire. Okay. Um, In a Mema stand up comedy. Yes, sir. In a Mema, oh, yeah, sure, in, in, in a video, in a video, uh, there was some videos you have. Uh, yes, we yeah, have some videos. So, I come out there, my mother is dying. But I intend in doing that. Uh, in the nearest future, but we are on some comments. I did, uh, uh, I did by myself on my Facebook page, and um, it has been trending everywhere. Okay, so, um only of learning not into entertainment business. One thing you need, you need the email, you need the email YouTube channel. And then in your YouTube channel, you need, you need to post yes. of what you do. It's not a, it's not, it's not, it's, uh, YouTube is free. You can create a oh, channel. You just record yourself, uh, somebody records you, you post a sample, one minute, two minutes, three minutes video of exactly what you do. So that other people will see that's how you market to sell. I'm sorry, let's get back to Carlo. Let's get back to Carlo. So Carlo, 
what was your motivation? What was your motivation in starting uh, all these the businesses uh, you you um, explained earlier? And what was your motivation? Uh, well, how did you get the, How did you get started? Yes. Well, the brand behind everything was, uh, you know, after your NYC, I, I finished serving last year, around July last year. When the government pays you that last 198, and you have eaten that money, that is when you know that life has started. I was uh, so confused that uh, the thought of going back home to just go and stay with my parents without doing anything was not appealing. So instead of going home to be looking up to them and to create more burden, I looked around my environment, noticed that a normal business here, yeah? also storage. So I decided to venture into it and uh, try my hands and see if it is something that I'll be able to do. So last year, I got a piece of land about a hectare or so with one of my colleagues also that served here that stayed behind. So we started farming. We farmed the goosey that year with the ebony seed. So that's what we did. And we we had though we also had a because it's a new venture. There were many things we overlooked. Like this full and wahala that we have always been hearing about. You know, when you are afar, you don't really understand, you don't really understand what these people do. We farmed and they, they took in their cattle to our our farm and grazed on our farm products. So it affected our harvest. But yo, that doesn't stop us from farming. So we continue. So that is the brand behind my going into farming. Then that of the shop was the, you know, farming is now except where you're practicing irrigation systems. And uh, here in Doma, they don't really practice irrigation systems. So from that, once the rain goes, you just see them loitering about. People will just be standing. They will never do anything. You go to people's houses, they will just be there just discussing and feeling idle. So I decided I can't just stay like that also. I looked for a shop and started a cosmetic business. That's what led me to that. Then for the private lessons, I served here. And that, to be frank, the quality of education in this vicinity is very, very poor. You find just three students. Here yeah, they speak Hausa. You find just three students. As a three students, uh, you'll be trying to communicate. The next thing you hear about the MC, they don't understand English. And I now wonder, how did you get to get, how did you get to SS3? How did you write your junior work? And if you see their um, results, when did they write results? Wonderful results. So I have always been complaining and uh, I've never appreciated it. So I decided, instead of just laying complaints, I think I can do something actively to turn around the story. So I started letting, I started tutoring a couple of students that couldn't read. And before, in less than a month, they started reading. So when the good news now, when it came up that hat, here they call me copper, they still call me copper, even though I'm done serving. Papa took out my children for a month, then they can already read. More parents, we are now uh, willing to bring their students. And they finally, I started one in the church. I had almost, four, I, have, I have about 40 something students. So that is all what led to it. So that's for the lesson. It started because of my desire to make sure that uh, the students, they don't just get the certificate. They don't just get their, their school living certificate, their work or their junior work, but that they have something on sales and so that they'll be able to, they will be beneficial to the society at large. Thank you. Okay, so now, uh, how, do you, how do you charge them? Do you, how do you charge them a flat fee or what? How, do you, how, is that, how does that work? As of now, I made it in such, some parents contracted me that I should handle private uh, lessons for their children. So that, for that, they have a different fee. Then the one that I organized in the church, I organized it because of the ongoing pandemic. You know, schools are closed, the children are just at home, they're levanting, jumping up and down. So when I organized that one at, in, in the church, I remember here, they have a little, they, they have apathy to education. So I brought the price very low, so that uh, a flat fee, so that uh, more people will come. And uh, to the glory of God, a lot of uh, children turned up, and that the lesson has been going on. So, because of harvest of equity, you know, the harvest of equity is not fun. It's a very stressful thing. Many of them have pulled back their children, have gone to farm. So after harvest and after farming benefit, they'll come back. So, 
for that in the church is flat fee. Then for those that I that meet me personally for private lessons, even adults, I charge them dependent on what we agree on. Okay, so do you also help in uh, preparing for uh, exams like uh, YA or um, NECO? Yeah, um, I I helped last the last jam that they, they wrote. I organized the jam lesson and uh, a lot of a lot of people turned up. But I don't prepare for why I can go here because, to be frank, no matter what you prepare, they will still do expo. And I do not engage in anything that we just go in futility. How will I prepare and why they will still do expo? So I just, and even if you organize any lesson, just get towards helping them to reach towards their work and neko. They will not come. The reason why they even came for jam is that they know that it will be difficult for them to have their way. That is why they even turned up. But once there's a very, any slight enough opportunity for exam or practice, don't bother about it, they will not come. Okay, so, okay, thank you so much. Uh, you have a lot on your table. Uh, so what are okay. the challenges, specific challenges uh, you, you're facing in, in doing all these things, specific challenges? Uh, the specific challenges in doing all these things is that uh, first, is that uh, after when I go into school to study, I never planned that by now, I'll be going, I'll be carrying out lessons or farming or these things. From what I said earlier, it was just the situation that turned me around to start doing it. I had a mind to work in, a, in an organization, uh, as a chemist, I can be a data uh, analyst, I can be a quality control analyst. These are kind of roles that I can play, even in the pharmaceutical industry, in a whole lot of fields. So, but due to the, the situation of the country, we do not get jobs here easily. And the uh, irrespective of the number of applications you write, I, 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 it's no reasonable response. So, I, I decided to go into this. So, these challenges I get here might be different from challenges under person might get under place, probably because of the environment. Like I said earlier, here. Uh, let's get back to uh, Are you ready? Yes, I'm okay. Okay. So you said, you said um, uh, you graduated uh, the best student in your day. Uh, congratulations for that. We are so proud of you. So Thank now, you. Um, my understanding is that sometimes uh, the school tries to hire the best students. Uh, have you tried to make any application or uh, even in your school or somewhere else? Yes. Um, uh, the policy with uh, the university or should I say the agreement between my faculty and the university is that uh, since it's a professional discipline where most young people, once they graduate, they want to go and practice, is a lucrative uh, uh, discipline, a lucrative profession, because when you survey land, these days you hear mandatory deposit, depending on the area of the land, uh, maybe if, if it's less than 500 square meters, you are hearing 120,000, 150,000, depending on the location also. So you see that many good students, they also follow the trend. And when they graduate, they also leave campus. So they want to go and practice and make some money. So the few want to have the interest of, um, they, who have interest in academics, who want to lecture or who want to teach, it's um, university policy that those ones are adopted. But um, what we get to see was that in recent uh, years, uh, those people are no longer being adopted. The students who graduated very well right. and have the uh, interest in teaching, they were no longer being uh, they were no longer being uh, retained in the department. But uh, the situation with mine was that when I finished, due to the knowledge I have in uh, mathematics, in uh, MATLAB, in geodesy, so um, I served my NYC, I did it in my in the university in the department. Oh, best the two students. I was, I was lecturing in the, the no, university I to them. as a copper. So after my youth service, after my youth service, um, the HOD has tried to uh, push my application to the VC and also try to explain to the VC why I need to be returned in the department. So I can say in, in response to your question that, yes, I've made an uh, uh, attempt to apply for the position of a uh, graduate assistant or like a graduate assistant actually in the university. So how about how about getting the professional license? Is this something that you are? 
Yes, yes. Um, it's something I'm considering seriously because um, just as uh, my uncle told me once that it's kind of um, uh, useless See, you don't have a professional discipline and you don't have license to practice. And he gave me an example of a lawyer who finished, who finished uh, the university. He didn't go to law so it's very important to have the, the, the life and then you also practice your the discipline i really enjoy outdoor uh, activities just camping and even the sovereign profession itself uh, i love going to the bush you know we come we, we survey our areas and all that we survey the location and all that so i say yes i'm actually considering getting my professional license um, I hope uh, by in the next two years, so I should have that. Okay, so is there an um application fee that has to be paid to actually get something uh going right now? Yes, um, when you want to apply for pupillage, we call it pupillage in Slovenia. Pupillage is what you embark on as um. Uh, a fresh graduate when you because as I am now I can't certify any plan I'm not recognized by the surveying council of Nigeria which is uh, the strongest surveying body in Nigeria so for me to get my license what I need to do is to go and start on that another register surveyor for two years and carry out um, some professional jobs and after two years I can come and write my exam and defend uh, the profession to show that I can, I know what I'm doing. So the fee involved there is um, the, the, like now that I want to start, I have to pay, uh, buy the form, send some files to Abuja and a lot of things like that. So from the query I made, I found out that it was approximately 50,000 Naira to do all these things. Then after two years, when I will now want to come and write the exam, uh, because I have to print a lot of plans, I have to register and all that. I, I, it's estimated that I've spent around 500,000 Naira after two years. So I will say within 550 to 600,000 uh, in the space of two years can get me my professional license. So now if, so if, if somebody now gets uh, um, approximately 50,000 Naira, you will get a professional, at least you will get the first one. Is that true? Of course, I can get started with 50,000 Naira. Once I have 50,000 Naira now, I can get, buy the form and send my uh, 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 credentials to Abuja and then start the process. So the time I'm going to spend money again is after two years. That's when I'm now going to write the exam, um, which I'm confident I can't fail. I'll just write it once by God's grace. So after that, the, when I'm going to spend the next money. Okay, so now have you contacted any of the uh, uh, surveying companies where you can do some of this um, uh, uh, training? The uh, population, yes, the population, because uh, a lot of lecturers in my department who have great respect for me and the knowledge I possess, they really want me to be under them for the period of um, the, the, my two years pupillage. Even outside the, uh, my lecturers, I have other surveyors who have heard about me because um, I'm a little popular in my department because I, even as an undergraduate student, I, will teach, I was teaching master's students and I was teaching PhD students too uh, on some uh, applications such as MATLAB. And I also did some uh, adjustment computations for them also. So in that, uh, in doing that, I got acquainted with um, a whole lot of surveyors inside the Pueblo State, even outside the Pueblo State. Even as I'm talking to you now, um, uh, I have the contacts of the surveyor general of this uh, Pueblo State. So these are people who have uh, the mind to adopt me if I'm willing or if I have the capability, the financial capability to start my professional a journey that is to get to to get my license so i have people who believe in me who believe in my abilities who can give me a space in their firm so i just call them so that is not an issue at all okay all right thank you so now let's see uh what um uh Iberia people forum can do to mobilize uh funds to get you the license now let's get back to day the uk day the uk let's get back to you you have to stabilize um, I'm trying to make this 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> um, now let's get back to let's get back to first of all to uh, as a law student. Let's talk a little bit about law students. So, um, tell us a little bit more about your experience as a law student. Okay. Um, as a law student, uh, um, you know, when when you get the admission, it's like wow, mommy was a law. Everybody's rejoicing. But when you go and get another word, but uh, uh, we've been we've been trying, sir. Uh, I went there. I made friends, and we've been copying. And you know, it's it's white and black daily. So you have to prepare to be all the all the nail in secondary school all over again. Uh, there is no change of uniform, nothing else. You just have to wear your white and black. And there are we have strict uh, uh, dress codes. And that's in Hobo, if they will take you to the mute courts. So um, generally, I've, I've come to get myself acquainted with the, the law itself, like on the the basics. And then uh, uh, also when you are in second year, I'm I'm a kusira, all these things say they were important. So we are we are getting there. Okay. Um James, I don't know if James is ready now. I want to talk to James. I'm ready. Okay. So James, introduce yourself quickly. You are you're having communication problems, so go quite uh, fast. Okay. Uh my name is Okuna James. Uh, I'm a graduate of Industrial Technology Education from Michael Ryan University of Agriculture, Umudike in Abia State. So, so, what are you currently doing? Okay, I'm currently running a poultry farm in my location, Aba, to help myself in order to create an enabling opportunity to make money and further my education. Okay, so have you done uh, uh, all these uh, mandatory NYSC? No, I have not gotten my school clearance for mobilization for youth service. Okay, so uh, right now, so how is the um, uh, poultry farm business uh, progressing? Okay, still on the lighter note, but a few number of beds and they are growing fine, just little health challenges due to the condition of the weather now, everywhere is cold, so the little birds are feeling cold, and I'm putting all my best with the knowledge of agriculture to make sure they survive, and so that I can sell them and make profit. Okay, so uh, have you sold uh, your First, uh, have you sold any or you still, when they grow, it is when they grow, have you sold any? Uh, I'll be making my first sale in a month time. Before the end of the month, I'll be making my first sale after they must have matured well to make profits. So um, are you talking to people to let them know that that is what you are doing by the side or currently doing? Um, yes, I've been speaking to people around me, consulting people that purchase chicken for their bars, for hotels and eateries, so that they can purchase two or three number of chicken at the same time and sell to retailers who need it for their basic meat consumption. Okay, so how did you get, uh, uh, how, uh, what motivated you to go into this um, business? Okay, I got motivated from friends in school due to the school I attended, the University of Agriculture. I had friends in animal science and veterinary medicine who personally did this business while in school and they made profit and they are doing fine. So I got to learn a few techniques on how to run a poultry farm, on the necessary medications, on the necessary things to be done for it to grow well and survive. So I got motivated from friends who we are doing the business in school and they are veterinary medicine doctors. 
Okay, so now at, at the minimum, what does it take to start this thing at the minimum? Okay, it takes about 15,000 uh, to start with 10 beds and a bag of feed starter for the chicks at their early stage. They need very small sizes of feed that are in crumbles. So the feed goes about, the chicks goes for 600 naira at three weeks old. So I purchased them. I made the estimate of 15,000 naira to start the business. Okay, so what does it take to take it to the next level? Okay, it takes me, uh, due to their growth what? rate, yeah, they are growing. As they are growing, you need to create a more bigger space for them to grow so that they can't die. They won't be sophisticated. So I need to construct a big uh, portrait pen where they can stay because the one I'm using is still small. So, and I also need to purchase feed addictives. Feed addictives are what helps them to grow bigger and faster and so that you can sell out in a short period of time. So I also okay. need I also need to purchase feed. They have the three grades of feed: the starter, the growers, and the finisher. So I'm on the finisher feeds now, which I purchased about last week, and they are eating and they are going fine. So how much does that one cost? It costs about four thousand five hundred naira pay back. And then, like how many like how many bags do you need there in order to um, grow? all the uh, 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 the beds you have right now? Okay, I need about three bags. I have 25 beds. So you're saying that with three bags, um, you can feed uh, those chickens uh, to maturity? Um, for the grade of finish uh, I'm using now, I need three bags. But to grow them to maturity, I need about six bags for the three grades of feed. Okay, so now do you have to do you have to sell all of them before you start afresh, or can you buy new beds and then uh, start growing? Okay, I can buy new beds and continue so that I can have uh, beds at a regular stage. After selling a particular set, I can buy a new one and still have to sell others as the time goes by. So the only challenge I'm having, I have no space to train them because I need to construct a pen, a big poultry house where I can occupy more number of beds. So the major challenge now is getting the space or getting the beds. What's the major challenge? The one, the one thing that you need right now. Okay, constructing a pen, a, a big poultry house. I have a challenge there due to finances. So, so I made a little what, uh, loan from someone to start the business. What's okay, it? it will cost me it will cost me twenty five thousand naira uh, to construct a portrait pen due to the necessary materials: wood, zinc, sawdust, and windows, cement, blocks, so that I can start a bigger portrait house where I can buy the old chicks from the suppliers. Okay, so um, now the uh, the Better People Forum has heard what you said and then the audience. So let's see how we can uh, pull our audience and viewers and people who are interested in what we are doing to see how that, that can be done. Okay? And then we thank every one of you who uh, participated in this program. So, Ikech, okay. can you give your number, your WhatsApp number right now? Okay, uh, my, WhatsApp, my WhatsApp number is 0810-155-3917. Once again. 0810-155-3917. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, including our viewers. Uh, we are done for the day. Uh, thank you to all those who participated. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you.